Alright guys, it's November 6th, election day, so if you're in the United States and you're uh, over 18, you should get out there and vote if you're a legal citizen. You know, you can't can't complain about what's going on with the, the country if you're not voting and helping to elect good officials, so get out there and vote. Uh, anyway, this video is going to be focusing on the repower of this giant vac leaf blower. Um, I'm not sure what vintage this is. I believe it's pretty old though because if you look at the motor plate it's had quite a few different engines on there in its lifetime. You can tell because some of these holes are drilled way too close together. Those two uh, and those two. So you know that definitely not the original engine was on there. What I took off of it was this Briggs & Stratton uh, 7 horsepower. I'm not sure the year of this. It, it, I think it's an older unit. It uses a downdraft carburetor. Flathead. Um, if you saw my other videos, I put a new intake valve in it. Reground the seat. Um, new head gasket. Rebuilt the carb. New points. All that crap. It runs. It runs not great. I really don't like Briggs and Stratton engines. I'll just throw it out there. I've never had good luck with them. I just don't like them. Uh, especially these aluminum block ones. I think some of the design in this thing's pretty cheap, and they just they suck. Uh, metal gas tank that sucks too. So I decided, you know what? Instead of screwing with this thing anymore, I'm just gonna take it off and I'll sell it to somebody that likes Briggs and Stratton's. Probably use it on a go kart or a snowblower and have fun with it. That's cool. You know, gets it out of my way. So to repower it, I got a Chinese Honda clone. Now I don't really like Chinese products. But I need something that's more reliable than that Briggs. Uh, I'm having to screw with that thing every time I use it. And for what I paid for this, I couldn't, you know, for the, the parts I, more parts I would need to put in the Briggs and my time, it's cheaper to just buy this and put this on. This is a uh, 212cc, 7 horsepower Honda clone. Um, if you look at it, it looks very, very similar to the Honda motor same on off switch, pressure switch, all that stuff. It does have a metal gas tank, I don't like that. Uh, may coat it with something on the inside to prevent any rust from forming in there. Uh, I haven't started it yet, but uh, right now I'm doing engine mock-ups, so I don't really need to. Uh, it fits on there pretty good. The muffler has a problem, it's too low, so I'm gonna have to it, just weld in an, an extension there in the exhaust pipe, no big deal. Uh, as far as shaft, it uses a, almost a two and a half inch, uh, three quarter shaft, which is going to be an issue for what I'm doing. Um, so I'm, right now I'll just go through some of the things that I'm going to be upgrading on this, or trying to fix. Um, as you can see, I have it on this piece of laminate right now. That's because to, in order for the center line of this uh, crankshaft and the center line of the old Briggs crankshaft to line up, I need to lift this motor up one inch on the uh, motor mount plate. I'm thinking of doing that with a high grade um, plywood, using it as a spacer and then bolting through bolting through the bottom deck. Probably not the best thing. I could probably weld some metal or use some square some square tube stock. But honestly, I think it'll be okay. I mean it's it's on a um, blower, it's not on a chip or anything where it's gonna encounter any uh, you know friction. It's just pushing air. So it should be fine. I know plywood's not the best thing because it'll rot out or deform. Uh, but, you know, just to get us through the season, and then I can kind of rethink my engine mounting later on. Now, to adapt the blade here, the four-blade uh, blower part, I'm going to need to raise the size of this shaft. Uh, this is three-quarter. The old Briggs shaft right there is one inch. I went on to Granger's website, and they make a, uh, a sleeve used in pulleys that adapts from an inside diameter of three, uh, three quarter and goes up to an outside diameter of one inch. So I'm going to run one of those and then I'm going to have to come up with some kind of creative key. Uh, they make step keys, but I don't think they make a step key that's three sixteenths on the low end and uh, one quarter on the big end. So I'm a, I might have to take the old, the old keys, weld them, and then re-grind them or do something like that. Again, this isn't in a chipper or anything where these blades are going to encounter any um, surfaces. They're just blowing air, so I don't think I'm going to have a problem. Uh, if this was on a chipper or something like that, I would think um, of using a different method for adapting that. I would probably just bought an engine with a one-inch uh, shaft. 
So um, I've heard really good things about these. I heard they're a lot better than their predecessors. Um, they, they are Chinese built, but they are very, very similar to the Hondas. They're so similar, in fact, that I've been told that you can use Honda gaskets and, and rebuild kits and things like that on these. Um, like I said, it looks identical. And, um, you know, it, sh it should work fine. And these right now are on sale at Harbor Freight uh, for 119 And then they also have a coupon online, which is 20% um, off an in-store purchase. So I got it in-store. And I got it for uh, 195 And then with tax, I think it was $101. So, I mean, for 101 bucks, you, you can't really go too wrong. As long as it runs good, it's got a 90-day warranty. So... You'll bet that I'll, I'll put oil in it and run it for a while, make sure it's good before that warranty expires. Uh, also, a thing I think people have a lot of problems with these. I know the quality, you know, quality, quality assurance isn't there, and I, I know they, they aren't the best materials that they use, but I've noticed through a lot of the accounts I've read and in, in, in some of the videos on YouTube I've seen, a lot of people don't break these in. Um, a lot of people don't break in their car engines. People don't break things in anymore like they used to. I, I don't know if that's out of negligence or they just don't, you know, like you, they just don't know or if they don't care or whatever, but you really... <laughs> this engine's been run before, I can tell, because it's got um, a little bit of oil on the dipstick. Obviously, it was drained out for shipping. But on a new engine like this, you should definitely try to break it in, you know. Put oil in it, maybe run a full tank of gas through it, don't go to full RPMs right away. Either vary them or run, you know, only about till half and until you get like a tank or two through it and kind of break the engine in. Change the oil after a tank or two. You know, kind of get any of that heavy metal shavings from the braking process in there out. I mean, granted, I know this isn't an expensive engine. I know it's a, it's a knockoff and it's, used, and it's made using cheap parts, but I think a, a proper braking cycle would probably help it a lot. Um, it's, it's some people just don't really do anymore, and it, it I think it kind of, you know, it lessens the life expectancy of your engine. So I'm going to be doing that with this one. Um, I'm really contemplating going back and buying another one because I have a 5 horsepower Craftsman chipper out there that I picked up uh, to flip, and the the carburetor gas tank, it's one assembly on it, uh, is all rotted out. It, it looks like it was submerged under water, and I, I'm just thinking like, for the price to replace those parts used is probably going to be, you know, between 40 and 80 bucks. Uh, why don't I just put a new motor on it, and then I can sell it to somebody with a brand new engine. I can get the market value that I really want out of it. Um, so I'm going to do that. Uh, on the exhaust, like I said, it was hitting. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this little elbow, I'm going to chop that, get a piece of black pipe and, so I can extend this hat up, and I'll just weld the black pipe in there. No big deal. Uh, I might run a support rod just because it's kind of heavy, but uh, that's pretty much it. So like I said, guys, 100 bucks out the door, not, not a bad deal for a 7 horse. Um, these are overhead valves, so they run more efficiently than the old flatheads do. They use a lot less fuel, and this should be a lot quieter engine. This thing was loud as hell. It really, it was obnoxiously loud. And, um, you know, I'm going to put it online. I know a lot of people are big fans of the old Briggs, so hopefully somebody will buy it, and uh, they can use it for their project. Maybe maybe get in there, maybe do the exhaust valve or something like that. Um, you know, I figure it's got a rebuilt carb, and a new carb is over 100 bucks, so I should be able to get a little bit of money out of it. Um... And yeah, and, you know, I'm going to try to get this thing knocked out this week because I really want to use this to finish the leaf blowing that we're doing outside. And, uh, yeah. So that's the repower project as it sits right now. I'm going to run to the store and get, um, try to figure out a way to lift that thing an inch and get some longer bolts to mount it. And then later in the week I'm going to head over to Granger and get the adapter sleeve and see if I can get the step keyway for this, uh, little project. So I'll let you guys know how that goes um, and uh, stay tuned.